Good evening. And now we do a Course in Miracles workbook lesson 155. I will step back and let him lead the way. Now, this is another way of saying, let go, let God. And, and thank goodness it's not just let go, let God, what does it mean? Because we often hear contradicting mm, suggestions, like God only helps those who help themselves. Yes, to the truth and the light. You know, like I said, we've dreamt this up and then we, we've dreamt up this nightmare of biblical distortion to prove to God that we could create better than he could, that we could create a happier state than being in him, which is the eternal joy of, of life itself. So we wanted to create this mess. And then we pray to God that he help us fix this illusionary mess. And then we're surprised and he doesn't answer us. And then we're disappointed. And then we make up sentences like, well, wasn't meant to be. It's like a little, think about a, you know, little, you've got a, let's imagine you've got a little kid. Uh, I don't know, what age do kids build sandcastles? Five years old. And he now wants to build sandcastles right in front of the waves. He wants to go as close to the waves as possible and build a sandcastle. And you are aware, you're an ex- good old surfer dude and you realize there's a riptide and just now one of these waves is going to come in and pull this kid and his sandcastle into the riptide which means now you're going to have to dive in the water go swim after him and re try and rescue him but you're both going to get pulled out because it's a riptide can't swim against it get a surfboard and try and swim over it but it's going to pull you out anyway and so you say to the little kid no no come here sit here next to me 50 meters away from the edge of the water and kid says, no, I'm going to build my sandcastle there. And then the wave comes and knocks over his sandcastle. And you go, oh, daddy, daddy, or mommy, mommy, help. Stop the waves from destroying my, wave, my sandcastle. And you go, I can't do that. It's not possible for me to fix the natural flow of things. Come here, build your sandcastle there. Next, in fact, build your house on the rock. Paraphrase the teaching of Jesus. I will step back and let him lead the way. Now, for A type personalities, for control freaks, for those who have come from nothing and achieved by the power of their will and their willpower and their determination, this doesn't seem right. But if the willpower and the power of your determination and your ambition and your drive made you happy, why are you here? Because it's your ambition and your drive and your willpower that got you into the mess you're in. Because no matter what you created, the world's eventual place, lesson 153, and it's it's hell. It's designed to destroy your sandcastle so that you can seek another way and go build your sandcastle on the rock. Actually, in fact, build it out of rocks, on the rock. There is a way. The Mandalorian, this is the way you sci-fi geeks who love Star Wars, there is a way of living in the world that is not here. But then how do you live in the world if it's not here? Yeah, huh? Although it seems to be. Because no one lives in the world. They just seem to live in the world. There is no world. There just seems to be a world. Seems to be a universe. Vital understanding. Please get this now. Hence, henceforth, Luji, Guruji Luji Pu, isn't a spiritual person with pictures like this smiling. Because that's not <laughs> this illusionary perspective of the dreaming mind. This illusionary perspective that manifested the projection of Luji manifested this projection of Luji as a intellectual rogue mystic kick house kickboxing motorcycle racing fuck you belligerent apostolistic provocateur with a mind with the need to know and understand and only rest when it got it not changing appearance i can promise you great teachers 
Let's talk course specifically. David Hofmeister has always been a happy, gentle person. He didn't become it because of the Course in Miracles. He's becoming lighter through teaching it. He's becoming less David, more spirit. A Rupert Spira was always a pleasant, joyful, happy person. Muji, he was always gentle. Roguish on the outside, gentle on the inside, kind. That's him. It's not because he's awoken that he's now. He's always been that way. He loved God long before he became a non-dual spiritual teacher. I've always had a communion of God, even though I didn't love God. I was very angry with God as a young man because of my concept of what God was. I've never liked the world. I've never liked people. I still don't like people. I now love people, but not their appearances. They are. But because I love unconditionally that which is, that which appears as what is appearing, as people, places, things, and events, I have softened to people. And what's happened is that's changed. And certainly that has changed at me. The world is lighter, more gentle. I haven't been in a physical fight in 15 years. I haven't shot at anyone or been shot at in 20 years. I haven't had violent outbursts or had violent experiences in 20 years. And those were my daily activity. So if it can change for this, it can change. I no longer wear the Armani's and the $10,000 shirts and drive the $150,000 sports car. No longer needed. No longer wanted. No longer desired. And actually, fact, pain in the ass. Literally. How preposterous to even think of driving something like that in Africa. Uh, you do not change appearances slightly, just more casual. Though you smile more frequently. I certainly do. And I've got an awkward smile. I look like I'm about to growl and bite something when I smile, but I smile nevertheless. Your forehead is serene. No wrinkles, see? 55 years old. We're not browning all the time. Or maybe it's just genetics. Genetics aren't true. Your eyes are quiet. And the ones who walk the world as you do recognize their own. Yet those who have not yet perceived the way will recognize you also and believe that you are like them as you were before. Go to my old town where I grew up and people are still afraid of me. And I'm now just confused. And people that knew me in my high school years and my varsity years still think I'm some raucous, mad, ambitious, driven person. And they're surprised at what I wear and what I drive and how I behave. Not as hard, not as standoffish, not as closed off to. Not as defensive. Not as criticizing. And certainly nowhere near at all as vicious. Let that sink in. Those who have not yet perceived the way will recognize you also and believe that you are like them as you were before. But those that know you, know your heart as their shared being with you, will know you too. As God has always known you. As the mind that dreamt you up knows you now. Now that the mind that dreamt you up has awoken to the Christ self that is. The world is an illusion. And let's stop there for a second. Illusion doesn't mean it's not real. 
the world, the universe is very real. It's the activity of the dreaming mind. And though it, there is no matter and there is no space and time, illusion means that it appears as something that it isn't. The appearance of what is, isn't what is. The characters on a screen when you watch a movie aren't in the screen. Once you switch the projector off, it's just a blank screen. It appears real while you're watching. It triggers your emotions as you watch it. Once the screen is off, once the sound is off, and the cinema lights go on, what appeared to be a movie, simply a screen. The world is an illusion. The universe is an illusion. This body mind's an illusion. It doesn't mean you just write off, oh, it's just an illusion. It's not real. It's not true. You're not suffering. You're suffering an activity of a deluded, fallen asleep mind. What's real is the mind that dreams is real. Because it's the mind of the Son of God who is a, dream, who is a thought in the mind of God. And the truth of you, the shared essence, that life spark which you are, is a shared essence with God. That is most definitely real. That's not in the illusion. What appears to appear and disappear is the illusion. Those who choose to come to it are seeking for a place where they can be illusions. Drama. Live out a life of fantasy and avoid their own reality. I'm asleep and I remember not what I am. Yet we dream in order to realize what we are through the experience of what we're not. Neti neti, I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm not this, I'm not that, and therefore I must be who I am. Yet when they find their own reality is in here, while we dream, then they step back and the identity dissolves. You see, it's you can't awaken, you can't enlighten, you are like it, the self, the ego body mind enlightens in the way that it awakens to the self. And thus meaning that the little self that thought it was dissolved. And then they step back and let it lead the way, the self, the Holy Spirit, the memory for God within us. What other choice is really there to make? To let illusions walk ahead of truth is madness. It's why you hear it didn't work. To make manifest, to law of attraction yourself into whatever you want to. Well, if you law of attract yourself into whatever you want to, you're also going to law of attraction yourself into the things you don't because you don't get rid of the things you're resisting unless you're consciously aware of them, consciously aware of them all the time, and therefore at peace. Always. But while you search, you're not at peace. So as much as you may focus and vision board, a part of you is resisting, which is why you're vision boarding, hoping to get that and not this, but yet while you're hoping not to get this, you're still in the resistance to what is. And as much as you mind train yourself into not thinking about that, if as long as you're feeling it or it's being triggered by the world of illusions, you're going to resist it. And when you resist it, you're going to attract it because the law of attraction, which is actually the law of one, what is given to one is given to all, is also playing in the illusion we call in the illusion. We call that law, law of attraction. Because we love attraction, we call it love. What we call attract, what we call love in this world is just attraction, desire, because it's a need to conquer, because of a need of need of scarcity. So to let delusions walk ahead of us, in other words, to oh, it's happening to me because this is what I need to do, or it's happening to me because I'm making manifest is going to drive you insane and it's failed you and it's why you're listening. To me. But to let illusions sink behind the truth so that you become aware of the awareness you are. Aware that what is, is what is, is the activity of the dreaming mind. And you're aware that what is, is activity. And yet beyond what is, is the true self, the Atman. Observer and observed collapse as one. And as it collapses as one, as the Atman self realizes, it dissolves into the Brahman. The Christ dissolves into God. That which is. So let illusion sink behind the truth and let the truth stand forth. As what it is, is merely sanity. Now, you'll find in a lot of non-dual circles and beyond is the what is movement. Wow, what is is what is. And let the truth stand forth as what is. 
what it is. That is sanity. There it is in the Course in Miracles. 30 years old. Not some new what is movement. This is the simple choice we make today. The mad illusions will remain a while in evidence. So when you awaken to self, bear the silence and you just dissolve. No, you're 35 years old, 40, 50, 60, you're going to live to 90. You're still going to live to 90. You're just going to be vigilant now that you don't listen to the voice of ego, that you stay present in the voice of the Holy Spirit, the memory of God in you. And with practice and a silent devotion, stillness, gratitude, it becomes natural. The voice, will, the voice of the ego will still tempt you, even to your last dying day, even until you like Maharaji threw off his blanket and ran around a second before he died and said, I'm free, I'm free. Even to the last moment, it's still tempting. And that's okay, because you're an activity of the dreaming mind, awakening to itself. And it no longer matters what the voice of the ego says, for the truth is known by that which is appearing in what is. This is the simple choice we make today. The mad illusions will remain a while in evidence. For those to look upon who chose to come and have not yet rejoiced to find they were mistaken in their choice. I was mistaken to think that through this body-mind activity, I would find happiness and peace and, and in my fantasies. Now I realize I was mistaken because I found it within myself, the joy I am, as that which is the eternal extension of the joy of that which is God. They cannot learn directly from the truth, because they have denied that it is so. We have denied it. And so why would the truth make itself known to us? Well, when it does, we denounce it. And we make up all sorts of stories of what God is, this vengeful MF up in heaven, looking down on us with a tablet, counting all our sins that can send us to hell and damnation for the rest of our lives, or blah, 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 whatever else. We don't learn directly from truth because we've denounced it, we've denied it, we look not upon it. And even when we face it, we don't want to admit, I am responsible for what I dream. And so they need a teacher who perceives their madness, our collective madness, but who can still look beyond illusions to the simple truth in them. It remains here as our holy memory of God, our Holy Spirit, the, the voice for God that talks to us from within us, to us, for us, for our collective awakening. To awaken our dreaming mind, mind which is Christ. If truth demanded that they give up the world, it would appear to them as if asked the sacrifice of something that is real. And that's why you don't just prophesize and awaken to self and dissolve. But when you put this body down, there will be no need to reproject, reincarnate, replay, pause, play, replay, pause, play, replay. No, done. Many have chosen to renounce the world while still believing its reality. They wear their robes, whether it be brown or orange, and shave their heads and Kumbaya and Om and smack themselves and Mia Kulpe and I renounce it, denounce it, push away from it. I'm going to get off the grid and grow my own vegetables and, and become a vegan librarian, vegetarian and Kumbaya and meditate and prana through my third eye out through into Uranus and all of that magical bullshit. And then what happens? And they have suffered from a sense of loss. And they've not been released accordingly. Because why have they lost? They've lost the connection with their fractured selves. Because you need to love all of it and accept all of it as a mistake you made when you fell asleep and remembered not what you are. But they are mirrors, reflection, reflections and refractions of your true self. And so you realize I'm connected to all of it. I'm attached to none of it. I let it all go. I free it all up to be itself knowingly, to be whatever it needs to be at that moment, to appear as what is in that which is. Others have chosen nothing but the world, ambition, drive, build, empires, fame, fortune, money, power, control, vaccinate, destroy. 
And they have suffered from a sense of loss still deeper, which they did not understand, because what you reap, you sow. And the more you try and control and, 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 and own and make your own and build walls and boundaries, the more thieves and people you create that are going to take it from you. If you build an empire to make yourself feel good, that very empire will destroy you when it crumbles to dust and makes you feel like shit because everything you've ever built was built on what you thought you made manifest because you needed to be glorified for it. And I know lots of people that build empires and millions and millions and their families won't talk to them. They built it for their families. Their families won't talk to them. They built it for their kids. Their kids hate them. They built it for their girlfriend. Their girlfriend now hates them too, along with the ex-wife and the kids. And then they're dying of some miserable cancer. And no matter how much money they have, no doctor can fix them because of the self-hatred and the denouncing of the world is what the cancer is making manifest of inside the vessel which made manifest the illusion. Between their parts, thank God, there is another road that leads away from loss of every kind for sacrifice, Sacrifice and deprivation both quick are both quickly left behind. This is the way appointed for you now. You will walk this path as others walk. Nor do you seem to be distinct from them, although you are indeed and in thought and in awareness. Thus can you serve them a while you can serve them while you serve yourself, your little self, which is going to dissolve and recognize itself as the self and set their footsteps on the way that God has opened up to you and them through you. So don't denounce, embrace all of it without condition, without judgment, without needing to impose your understanding at them unless asked for. And then it's free. Because if you set a condition upon it, it never was the truth, but a truth that you needed in order to make a living. You say you love God and you trust God, yet you charge to do his work. You don't really have the faith you thought you had. God will provide as long as you guys keep paying for the workshop. Ha! You look down on everybody else that goes to job nine to five. We're more spiritual. God will provide. He'll send me students that pay me. You're disillusioned. Listen with the ears of the heart. Illusions still appear to cling to you. That you may reach them. It has, yet it has stepped back. <laughs> Illusion. I'm illusioning. There you go. That's the cat. He's called Grogu. Yes, you are. Yet it has stepped back. And it is not illusions that they hear you speak of, nor illusions that you bring their eyes to look on and their minds to draw. Nor can the truth which walks ahead of you speak to them through illusion. For the road leads past illusions now. While on the way, you call to them, and they may follow you. Because you want to share the peace you are, knowingly with them. Why? You know they are fractures of yourself. And you know that your true self, the dreaming mind, the Christ mind, only fully awakens when all fractured selves awaken to the self. But don't be in a hurry. God isn't. You may be, or think you are, and think we're running out of time. The end of days is near. The end of time is near. Yes, the end of time as the major currency is definitely near, but the end of days, well, the illusion will carry on a little while longer, a billion or so years, or six or seven, matters not, because it was never true, and as soon as it was thought up, it was forgotten, a holy instant. And once you have forgiven the stream completely, time will seem irrelevant. All roads will lead to this one in the end. This awareness of being awareness itself. The awareness, which is the self-same essence, as the essence, which is that which is. 
for sacrifice and deprivation of paths that lead nowhere, choices for defeat and aims that will remain impossible. All the steps back sign as truth comes forth in you and your awareness to lead your brothers away from death, the idea of, and set them on the way to happiness. For that is the nature of what we all are, our shared being in God. Their suffering is but illusion. Yet they need a guide to lead them out of it, not by telling them it's an illusion, but by showing them a better way to see themselves and see the world and let go through forgiveness. Through forgiveness. Because forgiveness is the poison you carry inside, hoping the world will disappear or die or be destroyed. For they mistake illusions for the truth. I'm going to become another soapbox preacher. The world doesn't need another preacher, another minister, another guruji. Just needs normal people. Another doctor so-and-so. Such is salvation's call and nothing more. It asks that you accept the truth. And don't shove it down everybody else's throat. And let it go before you, lighting up the path of ransom from illusion. It is not a ransom with a price. There is no cost, but only gain, because what's given to one is given to all equally all the time. Illusion but illusion can but seem to hold in chains the Holy Son of God. Can but seem to hold. Can but seem. It is but from illusions he is saved. As they step back, he finds himself again as that which is the extension of that which is temporarily, ethereally, appearing as what is. But what is, is the activity of a dreaming mind, which appears in that which is, and that which is, is the eternal extension of love itself. Walk safely now, get carefully, because this path is still new to you. Don't be like the evangelist who's just read a new book and a new path and can't wait to shove it down everybody's throats, including destroying a village if they get in the way and branding someone a witch and burning her at a stake if she disagrees with you. And now you may find that you are tempted still to walk ahead of truth every now and again. You lose your shit because you've taken it seriously and let illusions be your guide. Don't go into guilt. Enter gratitude, stillness. Give it to the more, give it to the Holy Spirit, give it to your Holy Spirit, give it to your Holy Spirit that He may washing machine it into clarity, into the knowing of yourself. Your holy brothers have been given you mirrors, not to follow you, but to follow you as mirrors. And just as you walked in, in and Jesus was there to demonstrate a symbol for how we can, symbolic for how we should act, unconditional loving. Don't try and be like Jesus, grow a beard, long hair, sandals, walk, drive a donkey. And then they're not like that. Be knowingly, innocently, joyous, forgiving, compassionate. And so your holy brothers are given you to follow in your footsteps as you walk with certainty of purpose to the truth. But don't use them as little stepping stones towards your enlightenment. But share with them your knowing so that you may know your knowing through their Smile Christ's face back at you. It goes before you now that they may see something with which they can identify. So as much as I sound like a rude motherfucker rogue, there's a little bit of rude motherfucker rogue in you. <laughs> you wouldn't be here. <laughs> no matter how skeinalich and holy you may seem to be. You're identifying because there's no as much as I love the Christ, there's no Jesus, Jesus, Jesus here. Because Jesus is the Christ. And the Christ is my shared being with God. As it is yours, as it is everybody in this planet. And the Christ is the term that we mystical Christians use. But the Buddhist and the, and, the, and the Muslim and the Hindu and the Taoist, the Christ, there's different terms for them. So don't get stuck on the Jesus Christ. For Christ's sake. 
for love sake. It goes before you know that they may see something with which they can identify, something they can understand to lead the way to themselves, to the journey without distance, the place you've never left, to a time that's never existed, to a home you cannot leave, for you are the home in which God abides. Yet at the journey's ending, there will be no gap, no distance between truth and you and all illusion. Walking in the way you travel will be gone from you as well with nothing left to keep the truth apart from God's completion as holy as himself. God is complete, but you know not this. And that's what God's completion means to you, the dreaming mind that cannot remember yourself and until you do, you cannot remember what God is until you know yourself with total clarity and certainty of purpose. Step back in faith, accepting this what is and realizing that what is appears in that which is. And what is will pass, but that which is never will. But that which is, is that which is for eternity. And that which appears, appears ethereally. Step back in faith and let truth lead the way. You know not where you go, but the one, capital O, capital W, who knows, goes with you. Let him lead you with the rest. Let go. Let God. When dreams are over, time has closed the door on all things that pass, and miracles are purposeless. Because now everything's a miracle. The Holy Son of God will make no journey. There will be no wish to be illusion rather than truth. And we will step forth towards us as we progress along the way. The truth points out to us. It will make itself clear. Be still in gratitude. Abide and it will come to you with clarity. This is our final journey into physicality, which we make for everyone. One less little projectionist. We must not lose our way. For as truth goes before us, so it goes before our brothers who will follow us as we follow a brother that came before us 2,000 years ago, Jesus, who is the Christ we share with God. We walk to God symbolically. There's no distance between you and God. God's as far from you as your heart is from you. Pause and reflect on this. Could any way be holier or more deserving of your effort? What way could give you more than everything or offer you less and still content? The Holy Son of God. We walk to God inwardly. We sink and surrender. The truth that walks before us now, the light that shines before our awareness, as our awareness, is one with him and leads us to where he has always been, here now, as the eternal extension of God's love. The way, but what way but this could be a path that you would choose instead? This is the way. Your feet are safely set upon the road, symbolically, that leads, leads the world to God, to the awareness of what we are. Look not to ways that seem to lead you elsewhere, another path, another ritual, another mantra, another meditation technique, another breathing technique, another book, another school. Stop being promiscuous. You have the word of God. Stick to this. You may reference two or three things, but they will confuse you. You found this. You found this profound awakening wisdom. Which gives you, which lightens you up, lightens your load, and gives you a palatable, tangible hope that you can live and experience and express. And hope is a sorry excuse for knowing, but it gives you hope until the knowing is developed. Look not elsewhere. Stick to the course. Dreams are not a worthy guide for you who are God's son. An activity in God's son's dreaming mind. Forget not that he has placed his hand in yours. 
and given you your brothers has allowed you to fracture yourself. But inside each fracture is the self which we share with that which is. He's given you your brothers and he's trust that you are worthy of his trust in you. He cannot be deceived. His trust has made your pathway certain and your goal secure. He will not fail your brothers, nor your capital is self, your truth. It's the self, same self in all our brothers. And now he asks, but that you think of him a while each day, that he may speak to you, be still and know I am, and tell you of his love, reminding you how great his trust, how limitless his love, for you are the love of God. In your name and his own, you are the love of God, which are the same. You are the love of God. We practice gladly with this thought today. I will step back and let him lead the way. Or I would walk along the road to him on a road that doesn't exist, on a journey that doesn't exist without distance, or I've never left the home of God. For I am the love of God, and I am the love in which God abides. I am the love of God, which extends eternally as that which is the love of God. Remember this. Be you blessed. Be as you are. Blessings. Thank you for joining me.